In this video tutorial, we're going to be covering a technique called hue and saturation adjustment layers. It's one of the most very basic features here inside Photoshop Elements, but it's going to allow you to change the color of certain elements within your layout. And so we're going to be using this example uh, right here. This is a uh, digital matte layout that we did. And so first of all, let's go ahead and insert our images. Now this template is available for download in our uh, download section here on the website. So check that out. Uh, there is a direct link in the video description as well. So we'll go ahead and just populate this layout with our images. And let's see here. We'll go grab one more. Maybe resize this one a little bit and reposition it. That looks pretty good. And let's see here. One more. This one maybe. All right. So now we have all of our images in place. Now what we might want to do is we might just want to change the color of these two layers, the inner mat, and then we have the outer mat. And so to do that, we're going to add a hue and saturation adjustment layer. Now watch what happens when I add a hue and saturation adjustment layer. Actually, let me zoom in here just so you can see this a little bit more clearly. You can see we have a really nice texture on the inner and outer mat, so we might want to just change the color but maintain that texture. Now if we wanted to just change the color, we could just come in here, change the color, and if we hold down the Shift, the Alt, and the Backspace, or Shift, Option, Delete, then it would only fill in the colored pixels of that layer. By holding that Shift key down, that's, that's essentially what's telling Photoshop Elements to do that. But you see, when we do that, we lose our texture in the process. So we want to keep the texture, but we want to change the color. So I'm going to click on my outer matte layer and come down here to the layers uh, palette and choose create new fill or adjustment layer and choose hue and saturation. Now when I do that and choose the colorize button, notice what happens. We get this kind of tint across the whole layout. And there's a little button right here in the hue and saturation that says this adjustments affects all layer below. Click, it says click, let's do that again. Click to clip to layer. And that's what we want to do. We want to clip it to the outer matte layer. So when we click, now that you see now that tint is only affecting the outer matte layer. And notice that we changed the color but we maintained the texture and that's obviously what we were after. Now I'm going to actually click that again because there is another option and that is to hold down the alt key or option key on a Mac and click see how the icon changes and we click and that also creates a clipping mask as if we needed one more way to do it let's go ahead and delete our hue and saturation adjustment layer if we were to hold down the alt key or option key and choose the hue and saturation, we get a dialog box which has this handy little use previous layer to create clipping mask. When I click OK, then I click colorize, notice that it only affects the outer matte layer. Why we need so many options, I don't know, but those are the options, okay? So once we understand that basic principle, most of the time when we're adding a hue and saturation adjustment layer, just come down there click on that little button because the hue and saturation is going to affect just the one layer that we want it to affect. Now from here this is where we can go crazy. We can modify the hue and as we do that you can see we get a whole rainbow of colors. We can adjust the saturation. If I do no saturation notice it gives us black and white or if I increase the saturation it gets brighter and brighter and brighter. If I increase my lightness, of course, it gets lighter and lighter and lighter. And look at, even if it's so light, look at that texture that's still there. Can you see that? Um, and that's the real advantage here. Now, if I go back the other way, make it dark, the texture's still there, but now it's super dark. Okay? And of course, if we make, went all the way dark, it'd just be black or all the way 
light it would be white. So somewhere in between there. But you could just kind of get the, what I like to do is get the lightness about how dark or light I want it. And then, you know, kind of adjust the saturation. Usually, I, I like pop. So I usually go maximum saturation. And then it's just a matter of chick picking a color. And then you can fine tune like um, right here, you know, I've kind of like that yellowy green. So if I adjust it some, you know, it becomes more yellowy green, you know, and that maybe that would be a really good, you know, really pow. If that was sitting on the wall uh, in a girl's room, you know, that really stand out. And so maybe we'll just leave that like that one and then come to the inner mat and we'll uh, do the same thing. So we'll go ahead and we'll add an adjustment. A hue and saturation adjustment. Hit the colorize option. Hit the link to option. So it's linking to only my inner mat. And then of course we'll start by boosting our saturation. And then I have an idea for something pinkish. And then I could zoom in here and determine what I want to do here. If I want a nice lighter pink or darker pink. Um, I think that looks pretty good. So if I look at actual pixels, that's a full, full screen view. That looks really nice. So I think I'll just leave that. And you can see what a pretty uh, thing this would be on a girl's poster. And, you know, put in a nice pretty white frame and really pop right off the wall. Um, so anyhow, that gives you an idea of how that hue and saturation works and how you can modify that. Uh, use that to modify the different layers uh, to create some interesting effects. Thanks for watching.